What's up guys, this is The Honest Outlaw here, and today we're gonna to be talking about the best 10 pistols under $750. Now this is gonna be the 2021 version, so you're actually gonna see some of the guns that were in the previous list. I've actually got a lot of lists of best guns under 300, best guns under 400, best guns under 500, and since those are so popular, I figured I would adjust them for the new prices for 2021. So you're gonna see some of the guns off those lists on this one. Now, I've shot a lot of guns in my life, I do a lot of gun reviews, and I've been lucky enough to get my hands on and shoot most of the popular pistols in the market. So this is my choice for the best 10 guns under $750. It's my opinion, but it is an educated opinion, based on lots of experience with firearms in general, but especially pistols and in all different types of weather conditions with very high round counts. Now, I took the 10 best pistols I could find, and I rank them based on what I think is just the best overall. Anywhere from reliability to accuracy to ergonomics to speed, how they flex in different situations. A lot of these pistols are gonna be compact or kind of full-size guns. That way they can flex into any role that you might wanna put them into. If you wanna have a concealed carry gun, then you wanna take it home and use it for a home defense gun, but you also wanna shoot it on the range and have a good time, these guns will flex in all those roles. That way, if you only wanna buy one gun, you can pick one of these off this list and be very happy with your choice. Now, as I said, we're gonna be ranking these based on reliability, how well they did in each of the thousand round reviews that we did, and how they also did with varying types of ammo, whether that be full metal jacket or hollow points and in adverse conditions like snow, rain, and different types of weather and temperature. Accuracy on close range and a distance, speed, how fast the follow-up shots were based on the trigger, and how well it handles recoil. The overall ergonomics, aftermarket accessories, and ease of use, how quickly your average shooter will pick them up. We also took in consideration how good they look and how fun they are to shoot and how available they are because if you can't find one, it doesn't do you much good. And at the end here, we will also be having uh, quite a few honorable mentions. It was difficult for me to break this down to a list of 20, let alone 10, because there's just a lot of quality firearms on the market today, and I just really broke it down to my 10 favorites, but even the honorable mentions will be more than good enough for most people in most situations. Now, before we start the video, I do wanna mention my patron supporters. Uh, my patron supporters, thank you guys very much for keeping me on the channel. For the past year, you guys really helped pay for all the guns and all the ammunition that we use on the channel. If you'd like to support the channel, all you have to do is go down to the link in the description and click the link and sign up. Also in that description is gonna be a link to a local shelter in Ames, Iowa. It's a youth shelter. Those kids could really use your support, so please go down there and click that link. And lastly, there's a link to Honest Outlaw Swag. If you want some t-shirts, some mugs, some cool neck gaiters, go down and click that link. Let's get right into number 10 here with the Canik SFX. Now, as you can see here, the uh, red dot is missing. I do a lot of pistol reviews, so red dots go on and off pistols constantly. Uh, this either comes with iron sights or it comes with different optics mounts depending on what you want to put on there. The reason why I like this gun so much is because it's really affordable. Before 2021, it was coming in right around $500. Now it's like six, six and a half, even $700, depending on where you get it. Sometimes you can still find it for around $500, which is really nice. Not only is this gun reliable and accurate, but it's just packed with features. This is a striker fired five inch, nine millimeter pistol that has a phenomenal trigger. Kind of based on the P99, very similar feel to a Walter PPQ or a VP9. Great trigger right out of the box. Great reset as well. Uh, several people have even won world championships with this in uh, the competitive shooting circuit. Comes with a uh, kind of a tri-colored look there, which looks really nice. It's got a sniper gray uh, Cerakote job on it. Comes with fiber optic sights and again, that optics mount. Also has uh, front slide serrations on it and a Picatinny rail and an extended uh, magazine release as well. And it also comes with three magazines. Uh, some of the best value you can get on the market right now currently, super accurate pistol overall, easy for me to make yard shots with and in my testing was 100% reliable with regular ammo and carry ammo. A little bit big for a carry gun however even though it's a little bit large if you're a big guy like me so relatively easy to carry because it's so lightweight. Coming at around 28 ounces or so it makes it a super lightweight gun even though it has the uh, accuracy of a full-size pistol. In at number nine here, we have the Beretta M9. Now what you see in front of you here is actually kind of just something for me to reference while I talk about it. This is actually an M9A3, which is my favorite version of the M9. But the base M9 and the 92X uh, come in at around 
six to seven hundred dollars currently depending on where you find them sometimes even around five hundred dollars makes them very affordable the m9 platform or the 92 is extremely proven it was uh the u.s military's pistol for many years something like 30 years from 1982 until uh, very recently it's a double single action pistol which is a little different than a striker fire design so you have that long double action pull as a nice safety and if you want to you can run it in single action for a very nice for a very crisp and nice trigger now after you pull that first double action pull the slide is going to reciprocate and you're going to be able to run it in single action for uh, the rest of the magazine comes with uh, 16 round magazines this one actually comes with 17 and it's got an open top design which a lot of people like a lot of people don't comes with a safety decocker if you're into safeties I have no preference either way if you like them or you don't it's up to you uh, it does come with one of those which is really nice also it comes with a, a pretty nice magazine release and good ergonomics overall the bread m9 is not only one of the most proven pistols in military but it's also been used in law enforcement and civilian civilians all over the world. Extremely reliable, one of the most reliable pistols ever made, and it has just those Italian good looks that makes me absolutely love the pistol. One of the best things about the Bread M9 is that it suppresses really well also. If you're into suppressors, silencers, whatever you want to call them, uh, the Bread M9 uh, works really well with those, and usually you don't even have to change a recoil spring or anything, it'll just run very nicely. It's a 33 ounce pistol with a five inch barrel, so full size gun, don't get me wrong. It does have a metal frame, but it is aluminum, so 33 ounces really isn't that heavy that's only about five or six ounces heavier than your average Glock and the nice thing about heavier pistols they do soak up the recoil a lot better and they do settle the pistol down and I find that this pistol is a lot more accurate than your average Glock or M&P in at number eight here, we have the FN 509 midsize. Uh, the gun you see in front of you here is actually the 509 Edge. I kind of wanted to show it off a little bit because we're going to be doing a review of it here relatively soon. This is the souped up version of the 509 with all the cool whiz bang features and the uh, five inch barrel. This is obviously over the $750 mark. However, the 509 mid is more of the Glock 19 size version of that. It has 15 round magazines and a four inch barrel. It runs off a of striker fire design, making it very reliable and it has a very consistent trigger pull which is easy for newer shooters to get a hold of 27 ounces makes it very light and very easy to use for everything you can use it like a full-size gun shoot it really well but still concealed carry it all day and not have any problems 100% reliable in my testing and it is very accurate and fast Great trigger, good reset, and it comes with all the features that you would want right out of the box, which really sets the 509 apart from some of the other pistols in its class. Comes with great texture, back straps, full ambi controls, a pick rail, a takedown lever, and front slide serrations. Overall, it is just a bomb-proof design made by a company that is used to making bomb-proof guns. It's gonna be super reliable for you, very accurate, very fast, good ergonomics, easy to use, and relatively cheap, coming in at around the $550 mark with all the accessories that you could need, so no need to throw sights or a trigger or anything in it. It's gonna be good for you right out of the box. Next up is going to be the CZ P10C or P10F. The P10C is going to be the gun that most people prefer. It is, again, the Glock 19 M&P Compact size pistol, 4-inch uh, barrel. This one actually is a 4.5-inch barrel with a full-size grip. This one holds 19 rounds out of the box. Very, very cool. I like the P10F a lot, and it's actually one of my home defense guns that gets in the rotation uh, simply because of the reliability, accuracy, and ease of use. I said it's got a 4.5-inch barrel, but it is a striker fire design, and it only weighs 28 ounces, which is a very impressive weight for a full-size pistol. One of the best triggers out of the box on the market, no question. Not only does it have a great trigger, but it has phenomenal ergonomics as well. Awesome undercut trigger guard, so no need to get that Glock knuckle or anything like that. Front serrations, tri-top slide, comes with great sights out of the box, has really good ergonomics and a really high beaver tail, allowing you to get a super high grip and shoot this gun way faster than you should be able to, which is really nice. It also has some texture over here for your thumb if you like to use that like a thumb ramp like I do. And overall, the gun is just a phenomenal value, just like the 509. Comes with all the features that you're looking for and comes in between the five and $600 mark even still today, uh, making it a very impressive and easy to use gun. Next up is gonna be the HK VP9 or the Walther PPQ. Depending on which one you find, very similar gun, very similar quality. Feels almost exactly the same. 
I honestly prefer the VP9 just a little bit, simply because of the ability to customize the grip. It just comes with those grip panels and it has that HK name, which I really like. I'm a little bit of an HK fanboy. This one sitting here in front of you is actually significantly upgraded. It is the long slide version, which is new for 2021. It's a little bit more than 750. The standard version with the four and a half inch barrel is the one we'll be talking about for this video. That gun comes in at about 25 ounces or so, has a four and a half inch barrel, comes with night sights, which is really nice, and it comes with a Picatinny rail and a phenomenal trigger and amazing ergonomics. The PPQ and the VP9 series both have probably the best grip and probably the best trigger out of the entire polymer series of pistols, and that's saying a lot. On top of that, they're extremely reliable. The VP9 had some uh, problems out of the gate, but over the past few years has totally solved that and is more than reliable enough to carry the H&K name. Overall, I think they look great and they shoot great as well. I would say that the VP9 is probably the most accurate polymer frame pistol, second maybe only to the PPQ. Uh, either one can go right up there. That's why it was so impossible for me to put one on this list and not the other, because they really do perform the same. It just really depends on whether you want Walter or whether you want H&K. Coincidentally, they're very similar in uh, in location as well. Now, the H&K does come with something that PPQ doesn't, which is gonna be the uh, the grip panels, and it's gonna be the slide uh, cocking uh, fins that, on the, that are on the back there, which is really nice if you have an optic, which is why I kind of wanted to show this off. Even though this is the long slide, the uh, regular version has that as well. Now, on this version here, I do have the optic on it, and I do have the new slide, and I also have the uh, mag magwell there from HK Parts, so you're not gonna be able to get that right out of the box, but overall, all the HK VP9, in my opinion, might be the best striker fired pistol. Coming up here, these are gonna get so close to where you could really pick one or the other, it's just gonna be personal preference. All of them are really gonna work the same. In at number five here is gonna be my personal carry gun. This is actually the gun I carry the most. Uh, besides maybe one other that's gonna be a little bit up higher on this list, but this is definitely the most comfortable pistol that I feel confident in using. This is the Glock 43X. This has a three and a half inch barrel and it weighs a featherweight 16 ounces. It is a striker fired pistol like all other Glocks, except it's the single stack version. The nice thing about it for me is it's just small enough to carry, but it's just large enough to actually shoot well. Guns like the Hellcat or the Sig P365 are extremely small for nine millimeter pistols. However, the grip is so small for me personally, I'm about 6'4", that it's really hard for me to shoot. This gun is not only comfortable for me to carry, but I can shoot it really well and really quickly. The other nice thing about it is Shield Arms does make a 15 round magazine, so if you wanna up the capacity, you certainly can do that. Comes with a pretty good trigger out of the box and pretty good sights, but overall, the real selling point to this is gonna be its reliability and track record. Glock has a really, really well-known reliability record because it's been used by military, law enforcement all over the world, and they just really are one of the most, if not the most reliable handgun. And to be able to get that track record and usability and all those accessories as well in a, in a slimmed down, smaller version that you can carry all day is a really nice pistol, and that's one of the reasons why I carry it all the time. Overall, I like the pistol as it sits out of the box. However, I have done some modifications in this one as well, like most of the other pistols that you've seen. I'm a tinkerer, what can I say? I like things to be perfect for me, and I like them to be fitted for me, and the Glock is a great pistol for that. If you like to change sights, you like to add slides, or get slide milling, or add magazine uh, releases, or triggers, or whatever, the Glock is the perfect gun for you, because it's kind of like a little Lego set for adults. In all fairness, it has the most accessories of any other pistol. Glock is the highest selling pistol of all time. And if you just want something that is backed up with aftermarket accessories, you can go to the gun store and get magazines, holsters, all that fun stuff. Glock 43X, really good way to go. Here, number four is going to be a pistol that in my channel probably needs no introduction. This is probably the only gun that I carry more than the Glock 43X, and that is going to be the CZ P07. This is a double single action design, unlike a lot of the striker fired pistols that have been on the list today. And again, I'll mention it just uh, just one more time like I did the Beretta, but the nice thing about it is is that you can carry it and you don't have to fumble with any safeties or anything. It actually has the safety right here, which is the longer first shot of the double action pull. That's really nice. You don't have anything to fumble with and it's just a little bit safer to carry overall, especially if you carry an appendix. Last thing you wanna do is pop around in your junk. You don't want that. So not only does it have that, but it has a phenomenal trigger once you get to single action. So either you fire your first round, then you go to single action, or of course you can fan the hammer old west style. I like to do that a lot. I shoot a lot of single action guns. And you can go to single action right away and have a better trigger than almost any striker fired gun on the market. It has a four inch barrel and has 28 ounce weight overall. And it is a polymer frame double action pistol. 
it really is the do-it-all gun for me. I can carry it all day and I can feel no worries whatsoever. It's unbelievably reliable. I have 4,000 rounds for this pistol. You can see that it is extremely beat up. They're easy to get as well and they're still coming in between the four and $500 mark if you can find them. Really good ergonomics and the grip fits me like a glove. Other than maybe the PPQ or the VP9, I've never felt a grip that I like better than the uh, P07 from CZ. CZ also is a company that well, I like a lot. If you watch some of my other videos, you know that I like the Shadow series, I like the CZ75 series. Pretty much everything CZ puts out, you know is gonna work, and you know is gonna be very accurate. So not only is it reliable, accurate, has good ergonomics, but it's incredibly fast shooting as well. One of the things that CZ does extremely well is lays the slide inside the frame as opposed to the other way around. Making this slide a little bit harder to get a hold of, but lowers the reciprocating mass of the gun, and also lowering the overall recoil impulse of the gun, making it very fast and very pleasant to shoot. I gotta say, it's one of my personal favorite firearms and I had to walk out of the door right now into a zombie apocalypse type situation. This would likely be the gun I would take with me. In at number three here, we have one of the best pistols ever made in my personal opinion. This is the M&P Compact 2.0. Now this is an upgrade from the original 1.0 and it has a lot of features on it right out of the box that I really, really like. Probably the only competitor to the number one slot in my personal opinion, but the M&P 2.0 really does have almost everything you need. Comes with great sights out of the box, phenomenal texture. If you're a texture guy like me, if you like to hold on to the gun and shoot it relatively quickly, comes with a great grip texture. Also comes with back straps if you wanna adjust your grip. Comes with a pretty good trigger, although I did upgrade mine to an Apex. Uh, Picatinny rail, front, si front slide serrations, and overall a super bomb proof and reliable and accurate design. The e thing that M&P really has over some of the other guns that are lower on this list is that it's available everywhere. If you go anywhere they sell guns, there's a pretty good chance they'll have an M&P compact there. The reason why that's important is because not only will the gun be there, but the magazines, the ammunition, and the holsters will also be there. Runs the nine millimeter, 40, and I think they make them in 45 as well. They even have these in 380. So it, no matter what caliber you want, you can get one of these M&P compacts and you can get it all decked out any way you like. You can have a whole carry setup. That's what's really important for those people that are getting a concealed carry for the first time is one thing you have to remember is you don't just get the gun. You have to get the mags, you have to get the ammunition, and you have to have a proper holster. A proper holster is very important as important as the gun itself. So get a holster that works well, and they're gonna be a lot easier to find with this super popular design like an M&P uh, pistol. The compact has a four inch barrel, and it is a striker fire design, and it comes in around 27 ounces, fitting very nicely into that niche of a do-it-all pistol. In at number two, and I don't know how it couldn't be, is gonna be the Sig Sauer P365. This tiny little pistol really changed the game a couple of years ago when it came out, and it is now, I believe, the highest selling pistol of the last year or so, and for good reason as well. It is a striker fired pistol with a three inch barrel and a 16 ounce overall weight. You could say that's very similar to the Glock 43, but what separates the two is that the P365 is significantly and visibly smaller. The one you see in front of you here is actually running an Icarus Precision lower. I told you I have big hands, so I actually like a little bit larger size on it, but the actual P365 itself comes in significantly shorter than this, and it holds 12 rounds. Think of your average uh, subcompact single stack gun and then add a few rounds to it without adding any grip size or weight whatsoever. It really is the smallest subcompact gun on the market with a 12 to 15 round magazine capacity depending on how, what magazines you choose. Not only that, but it comes right out of the box with all the features that you're gonna want for a carry pistol. It comes with high definition night sights, front slide serrations, a pretty good trigger, a good magazine release, and overall good ergonomics that allows you to take this tiny little pistol and shoot it as fast and as accurate as you need to. Usually small guns like this are relatively difficult to shoot. However, this one is not. Not only is it accurate, but the nice thing is it's fun to shoot. All these pistols I put on the list are fun to shoot because if you don't shoot them all the time, or at least if you don't like to go out and shoot once in a while, you're not gonna get very good with them. The way that you get good at something is you do it a lot and you go through the trials and tribulations and you shoot a bunch of different targets at different ranges and just, manipulate the firearm. So if you ever happen to have a malfunction, you know how to clear that. If you ever actually use the, actually have to use the pistol, then you're gonna be better off with it if you've shot it a lot. And overall, I just think shooting is a really fun thing to do. So if it's fun to shoot, it's an added bonus if nothing else. First honorable mention is going to be the Springfield Hellcat. 
It was really close to being on the list, but I do believe that the SIG P365 fills the same role, and it's just a little bit better gun, in my personal opinion. The next honorable mention is gonna be the Beretta APX. Great gun for the money, I can't stress that enough. Probably the best gun under 400, and I still see these around for the four to 500 mark, and overall has a lot of features for a really low cost. Another honorable mention that fits the same niche is gonna be the Taurus G3C. Another great gun around the three to $400 mark that can compete with a lot of guns on this list. However, just not quite up to the quality of the ones in the top 10. Another option is gonna be the CZ P01. Very similar gun to the P07. Uh, it has these classic CZ75 ergonomics with an all aluminum frame. I just personally prefer the P07 a little bit better. However, very similar guns overall. If you like the looks and feel of the P01, by all means, go for it. IWI Masada is another great gun for the four to $500 mark, and it has a ton of features, very similar to the FN 509. However, I feel the FN 509 just had a little bit better track record. The SIG P320, it's a great gun. It's recently adopted by the US military, very modular system. However, personally, I don't like the ergonomics, and I think the recoil and pulse is a little too harsh compared to some other guns on this list. And finally, I wanna talk about the Walter PDP. It's a new gun that just came out. I just did a first shots of it, that's a previous video. One of my favorite guns that have came out in 2021 so far, and I think it could really be a contender for this list because it comes in around $600 or so. However, it hasn't been tested yet. I don't even have a thousand rounds through it, so I couldn't in good conscience put it on this list. And in at number one, a pistol that needs no introduction. I just don't see how I couldn't have put it at number one. Is it my personal favorite firearm? Not really. Is it the best firearm ever made? Maybe. Is it the best handgun ever made? It certainly could be. This is the Glock 19. Again, I couldn't help it. Out of all the pistols on the list, for all their pros and cons, this thing rose right to the top for one reason or another. Four inch barrel, 15 round magazines, striker fired polymer frame pistol that really set the world on fire when it came out. All these other pistols that were on the list in one way or another borrowed or stole one or two things from the Glock 19. The Glock 19 is the most reliable pistol on the market in my personal opinion. And it's probably the most used and most sold pistol ever made. The Gen 5 is the version I would go for. It comes with the optics mounting system and the front slide serrations, which are really nice. It also comes with a flared magwell, three back straps, three magazines, and a track record of reliability and durability that is second to none. Used by more uh, military and police agencies than any other pistol, accessories, holsters, and magazines are gonna be not only affordable, but extremely available in every place that you could go. The 19 is the right mix between the 17 and the 26 where you can use it all day for concealed carry, come home, put a light on it, use it for home defense, take it out the range the next day, and shoot it really well. It's fun to shoot, it has very low recoil, and it's extremely modular. If you wanna accessorize a gun, if that's your goal, the Glock 19 is for you. There's no gun that has more accessories than the Glock 19, and that's for good reason, just because they're extremely popular. If you're getting a gun under $750, and there's a bunch of guns in the, in the case, and you wanna choose between a Glock 19, a P07, an M&P 2.0, my personal suggestion is consider the availability of holsters and magazines, but then also pick the gun up. If the Glock 19, just because it came in as my number one, if you pick this gun up and you don't like the feel of it, because it does have kind of weird ergonomics overall compared to more of a 1911 design like an M&P 2.0. If you pick up a 2.0 and you like that better, don't take my word for it, get the 2.0. They shoot just about the same. The only real difference between the two is gonna be the overall track record and availability. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please help out your local homeless shelters, and remember to recycle. I'll check you later.